if you have the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Uh, I'd say I'd say people need to to really stop having excuses. People are always, as human beings by nature, we like to complain. But sometimes you have to look at where we could be and not look at where others are. We want to behave a certain way as people. The mindset of Africans is very, very much unhelpful, for lack of uh, a better word. Because we, we have, in Africa, these are the, in Africa you'll find most of the Africans want to behave like white people. But you have to look at the situation where you are. The white people, what is working for them? Maybe tech is working for them and all that. But here, we have to look at what is going to help us to survive. Agriculture is good. Agriculture helps you afford the lifestyle you want. If these people could change their mindsets, you don't want to live like a European when you have no job, when you're not doing anything. So we need to change our mindset from giving so many excuses so many excuses not to take that first step. So I wish people could just be bold and know that you can start from anything small. My name is Joel Belletti Mubanjizi Johnson. I am a farmer uh, and I'm the CEO of Echo Valley Farm. I have had a very fruitful life, at least for my age. I am a, I'm a former alcoholic. I used to um, Overindulge, shall we say, in alcoholism. So now you changed. Totally changed. What changed you? At some point, you have to realize that uh, you're on your own. You have to. You don't have to change for someone else. At some point, I think this was after my last stint in a rehabilitation center. I was like, I'm done with this. So um, one of the the guys that inspired me into particularly poultry farming is Daniel, Dr. Daniel. He is a medical doctor, but he quit his profession and joined uh, farming, and he has a very successful chicken enterprise. So that's one of the guys that has really inspired me to do my farming bit. Daniel, the chicken farmer. Are you the chicken farmer or the poultry man or the chicken man? The passionate chicken farmer. Do you know that you are inspiring so many people, even in Uganda? Mm. I'm glad that I can inspire lots of people. Yeah, but, but I think he has one uh, request. What, what is that request? Mm. That Daniel switches to local. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, will you ever switch to local? <laughs> um, I'll think about it. <laughs> Why are you not doing local breed, Daniel? Um, the reason I'm not doing local breed is because on a very large scale, it's quite complicated. It's a bit easier on a smaller scale, but mm. on a large scale, you know, 40, 50,000 birds, it's really complicated because the requirements and the input is so different. Mm. That's why. Yes, that's why. It's not about the money, Daniel. True, <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's not about the money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joel ba Baletti? Baletti. Baletti. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You know, I read about you, and I was told that you spent seven years in university. Is that true? Yes, it's true. How can you spend seven years in a university? Uh, like all people, when you're growing up, you make so many mistakes. So I happened to, at some point, roll with the wrong crowd, and I had issues with drugs and drink, especially drinks, alcohol. Yeah, but then, by the grace of God, I managed to overcome all that. You used to booze a lot. Yeah, I think I made a name for myself. Ha! Mm -hmm. The boozing man, what was the name? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, everyone knew me for that. That was what they associated me with, alcohol. Does it mean that you're not going to school or you're failing exams or something like that? No, I was not failing. On the contrary, I was passing, but then uh, it's not sustainable at some point. You know, we have the some addicts that are functioning. He can go to class as he gets drunk. And then there are those that cannot function. So I was not functioning. So I basically couldn't balance booze and and uh, school. You grew up in Uganda? Yes, I did. Where in Uganda? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Kampala. And how was life growing up? Life was good, man. I had, <laughs> I had, I had everything. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> life was good. How good was life? Man? No, li life was good. I've never lacked. I've never lacked. I, have, I was raised by a single mom, but then she provided everything that we needed from the time we were kids. A big round of applause to your mom. What do you mean by your mom did everything? 
she educated me. That's, that's like, first of all, that's the biggest gift you can give to your child. You can educate them and then guide them. See if the opportunities may be here and there. You can look out for your children and make sure they're successful. You have to set a platform for your child to be successful. Does that mean you became stubborn when you went to university? No, I was stubborn even in primary. <laughs> How stubborn were you? Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I think I went to I went to about 10 secondary schools. So. What? Yeah. 10 different secondary schools? Mm -hmm. Why? That was being expelled. There's one I walked out of, but then the others I was being expelled. <laughs> so now you're a changed man? Totally changed. W what changed you? At some point you have to realize that uh, you're on your own. You have to... You don't have to change for someone else. Hmm. You, are, you change for yourself. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. so... Um, at some point, I think this was after my last stint in a rehabilitation center. I was like, I'm done with this. You even went to a rehabilitation center? Yeah, quite a number of times. Why, why did they take you there? I had to solve a drink issue. For them, their best way of solving it, which turned out to be the best, was you go out there, get some help. I mean, at first, when you're this side, you don't know how to cope with these things. You're waking up and you're sweating, you're sleeping, you're... I mean, you can't sleep and you're thinking maybe I'm the only one who's going through this. Mentally, you're trying to, you, 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 you know, it's playing games with your head. But when you go to rehab and then you realize how other guys are also going through it, or even worse, Genius. you then start to build up. What were you studying in university? I did development studies. And now you are a farmer? I am a farmer. <laughs> why? Mm -hmm. I mean, why farming? I believe farming, first of all, in this country, Farming is not something that is overly burdened by the outside pressures of other businesses, like heavy taxes. We pay our taxes, most of them are paid indirectly. Although this, I think it's this financial year where they want to start taxing people, and they want to start taxing farms. Oh. Yes, but then uh, for the past, it has been one of the areas where you will not pay directly to the government. So there's less stress there. And then it's also something that has quick returns in terms of investment. So. For example, I'll give you if uh, a young guy has maybe like a hundred broilers. Mm. They know that in like four weeks, five weeks, they're going to get some money if they look after them very well. So it's, it's one of the easiest ways to get money if you know what you're doing. What does farming mean to you right now? It's everything. I, first of all, I enjoy it. As a person, I enjoy it. Uh, and uh, the job, my other work that I do cannot really help me with the in terms of being sustainable, in terms of supporting myself and the other people that I support. So you, farming right now, it means everything. You, I enjoy doing it and I also, I find pleasure in it. It's a way to relax. When you, maybe you've had a, a long day, you can look at your animals and maybe you get money from a sale and then you forget everything. What kind of farming are you practicing in here? I'm doing mixed farming. Okay. We have uh, mangoes, we have, um, Matoke, plantain. We have um, pigs, cattle, a few goats for our own consumption. <clears throat> we have local chicken, and we also have broilers. Is this business profitable? It is profitable. It is profitable if you know what you're doing, how, and if you how, and if you profitable? have market. Well, I'll tell you. For example, um, I'll give you the example, a simple example of broilers. Hmm. They may not be, the profit margin is not that big, but it's, it's almost recurrent. So if you, have your, if you have your batches, if you're doing your broilers in batches, you're almost assured of a constant profit. That's, that's one example I'll tell you. Another example I can give you is that if you have, for example, cattle and you know how to look after one good cow, mm. and it's giving you about maybe 30 liters, 20 liters, mm. in Ugandan money you're counting about 20,000 every day. So if you remove uh, the milk of the calf and you remove the, the, the worker, as well, the money that you paid, you're getting about maybe 15,000 every wow. day. So at the end of the month, from one cow, you have some, some good money. So you can see that in terms of profit, mm. if I want to make money in a short time, if I have maybe 90 million and I know what I'm doing, instead of me planting trees and waiting for 100 years, that's, that's another debate. But instead of someone planting trees and they wait for 10 years, if I have 90 million and I know what I'm doing, I can get that money very fast. Will you encourage the youth of Africa to enter into farming? Yeah, yeah. I will encourage them to, uh, to join farming, but they must also know that farming is a bit lonely. 
if you if you don't really know what you're doing, you will get frustrated. And those frustrations, no one's going to share them with you. You're going to suffer them alone. How lonely? First of all, it's you, the guy that has taken part in this enterprise, that has to to get the burden of everything. Hmm. You have to. Your worker doesn't care if you've made losses. You have to pay them. Your friends don't care if your 1,000 birds have died. They want you at the party. Huh? You understand? So it's kind of it's a commitment. So I encourage them. I, I would like to tell them it's better, much, much better, for them to take to take part in the farming, but do as much research as possible. Know what you want, and you must love it. If you're going there because everyone's telling, them that, telling you that there's money, you're not going to make it. So it should be something that you do for pleasure or passion. Or you must love it because um, if I don't if I don't have a love for chicken, I will not know what my chicken looks like if it has Newcastle. I'll be like, okay, this chicken is not okay. Put it there. Let's get something for it. This, all these people are going to give me their traditional advice. You know what? Get uh, ash, do this to ash, put it there, it will be okay. But if I love it, I'm going to see this one case, I'm going to isolate it, and then I'm going to maybe give the rest preventive doses. Yes? I really want you to take me around, mm -hmm. but I, I want to know if you still drink, man. No, 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 I've been, I've been sober for eight years now. I'm going to my eighth year. Whoa. Mm. See, I, ha <laughs> I have a friend who drinks like tomorrow is not there. Mm. If you have a message to them, what would that message be? They have to, they have to change. This is their own individual battle. Mm. They don't have to change because uh, they're changing for their wife, their children, their what. First, you as a person, you have to change. If, if I can tell you something, it's that I have been very, very down and I have met people that have been very down. But if you're positive about your approach and you want to recover, one of the tips I can give you, drink a lot of water when you've just stopped. Drink a lot of water. Every day that passes, get a calendar. Tick that day. Tick that day. Motivate yourself. If you want, you can go for a run, go to the gym, those who are interested. But you have to motivate yourself. The others can only do so much. They'll take you to rehab, they'll do this and that for you, but then they'll stop it there. They cannot do much more for you. It's you that is going to sneak out of this gate at night, go to the shop nearby, and come back with your liquor. And in the morning, you can act like it's all good. You're hiding it from them, but you know what you're going through. There are so many problems that come with alcohol. So many problems, so you, you need to stop. So many problems. Mm. What are the kind of problems that you went through? I've been, I've been detained, arrested, I've been, uh, I've fought, uh, I have uh, hearing problems in one ear. I think you can see this scar. Uh, yeah. There are so many issues that you go through with this. There are so many problems, you're even dropping out of school. They are, they are pro these are immediate problems. I, I can leave now, I have one ear, yes, I can say I have one ear, but then I leave. But then there are people that have lost their lives in that chaos. The people that are in prison for knocking somebody. I would encourage you to go to a rehab center in Uganda. I don't know if you've been to one and let people. And the problems are universal. The problems that are in here in Uganda with alcohol and drugs are the same problems that are in the US, the same problems that are everywhere. <laughs>most of them are crossbred cattle. We only have one pure breed. That is the, the big girl there, the Frisian. Ooh. The rest are crosses. We have 75%, uh, 55, 50%. We have a cross there, that's a Jersey cross. Ooh. Yeah, the rest are crosses. But uh, the, the pure one is that Frisian over there. So you take the milk every morning? Yeah, we milk every morning and every evening. Although I was advised that I should now start milking three times a day. Oh. Yeah, but then at the moment we're milking uh, morning and evening. The more you feed them with this, the more milk they produce. Uh, there's a difference here. It doesn't necessarily have to be how much food it eats, but uh, the type of feed that it eats. If you give it fresh grass, it can eat. It's more about more how much you give it, and then it will have a running stomach. Mm. If you want it to eat much less, if it's fresh grass, it can eat as much as 80 kilos even. But if it's this, this is Chloris. Uh, we grow, we grow it, and then we make it hay into hay. Uh, if it, if you give it this, you'll find that it will eat much less. It eats about 20, 25 kilos, and then it will drink a lot more water because this is dry matter now. 
dry matter is what is going to help you to produce that milk and to chew the cud like you see in that jersey. Mm. Yeah, and the, if you see it resting and chewing cud, then it's producing milk. Wow. Yeah, so you, it will eat less mm. of this. Why will a young guy like you decide to go into farming, man? <laughs> uh, farming is, is fun. If you, like I told you earlier on, uh, the returns are quick. So if you want, if, especially if you know what you're doing, mm. uh, if you make enough research, you will learn that um, there, is, there are very few businesses where the returns will be as quick as farming. As young people from Africa, we don't find farming to be that sexy. Mm -hmm. We don't find farming to be that job that, oh, I'm a farmer, you know. We want to say, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, and all of that. I mean, people don't tell you that sometimes? Part of the problem is how we have marketed the whole thing of farming. If you look at many magazines in Africa, mm. Uganda, mm. they're going to have a picture of a farmer, very dirty, no uh, teeth in the mouth, with a, with a hoe, with like seven kids on our back. Mm. That's not the image we want. Uh, the picture they have is because we have been fed, the mind has been fed to, to have this image of dirty business, dirty business, dirty business. Mm. But all this dirt that you see in the mm. farms, it's wealth. Because that is manure, you're going to sell that manure. Everything there is wealth. You can sell this manure. But we use it in the, in the grass that these animals feed on. We use it, but also, if someone comes and they want maybe some big amount of manure, we will give it to them. Does it mean you grow your own feed here? Yeah. Yes, we do. We grow our own feed. We have different pastures for the animals. We, have, uh, we grow maize for the, for the chicken and the pigs. So we, we grow different things. That's, that's how you can make it a bit more profitable. But uh, where we're going right now is where we have some bit of the local chicken. The advantage they have over other breeds of chicken mm. is that uh, you don't have to have a large number to make profit. So a client will come to us and they want um, they want you to breed for them. Okay. They want they'll say someone paid for this yesterday. You breed for them until about two uh, one month, sorry. And then they'll pay you and then they will take their take birds. It. Yes. So you do that business too? Yeah, we do. These are local breeds? These are local breeds. So I, I want to understand, is this expensive more than the broilers? Yeah, if you're selling the meat, for example, okay. you're going to, a kilo of this, they are going to give you, if you're selling kilos, mm -hmm. they're going to give you about 18,000 per kilo. Broilers are going to be about 8,000 per kilo. You see that? So the difference is quite big. Does it mean this one takes a long time to... Grow. Yeah, it, no, it, it doesn't because you can also sell it at around four months, five months. Okay. Depends on how you raise it. So okay. the trick I would give you, if you want to raise it and sell it for meat okay. on a commercial scale, then you have to lose something. If you want them to be free range, they won't be as hard. They will take longer to grow. If you want them free range, they will take longer to grow, but they will be very hard, which many people like. Mm. But if you want to raise them and sell them as, as they are, maybe very fast, intense, Mm. then uh, you can sell it at four months, but the meat won't be hard because it hasn't exercised and all that. So then you can, you can choose which one you want. If you have maybe time and big land, mm. let them be. Wow. Let them be. The local breeds? Yeah, these are the local breeds. Um, the, some of the chicks you've seen there, some of the eggs are from here. And uh, down the other side, we have another house like this. Mm. Yeah, so... Um, so part of them are from here, part of them are from down. Those chicks that you've seen, they're about 150 something chicks there. Mm. So a customer asked for, we always have customers that ask and say, can you get me maybe 100 chicks? Then they pay in advance, they book in advance. You get them and then you call them when the chicks are ready. Or if they want you to raise them for a month, mm. you then raise them for a month for them. How did you start? Uh, yeah, at first uh, I made so many mistakes. I went to a government farm in Entebbe and I bought croilers. Now croilers are dual purpose birds, meat and eggs. And they're also quite prolific in terms of laying. But the mistake I, was that I started with zero experience. Zero, zero experience. And so out of 500, I think I lost about 300. Whoa. Yeah, cause I, I really, there's, a, there's that first vaccine that they get. Marex, it's like an injection. If you miss that, you can, if, if you get that case, 
you can have all your birds just drop off one by one and it has no cure. So those are part of the mistakes that I started with. But the main, the, 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 the main issue was that I had no experience. Zero experience. If you had no experience, why did you want to venture into poultry farm? Yeah, well, I first had pure passion and zero experience. It's like if you, if you want to play a certain way, maybe you want to be a soccer player mm. and, and you really want that ball. Mm. But then the, the role of the coach, you may be the best player in the world, like Messi is the best player in the world. Yeah. But then... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leonardo is the best player in the world. <laughs> You're going to have to... Uh, the coach is there. You, you may be the best, but the coach is there. He's going to integrate you into a system where you know and he can get the best out of you. So at first what I had was pure passion. But then um, after making those mistakes, I now had to go and start looking at different options. Where was the mistake? Where was this? Where was this? Where was this? And then I came back and I knew what I was, I was doing. So that's why I'm advising everyone that wants to start. You must do enough research. I've met with professors. I've met, I've done extensive research. Hmm. Even now to this day, I still make enough research because I know there are areas where you can improve. There's no one that is a custodian of knowledge. You see? So it's all about continuing to. How long have you been doing this whole farm? Ten years now. Ten, Ten years? years. Mm. How many acres does this land sit on? This is uh, about 40 acres. You started 10 years ago? Mm. You're yeah, farming at first that... I was trying, but it wasn't really taking off. Uh, because of the alcohol? Yeah, you can't balance it because if you have, <laughs> if you have this small profit, you're going to... Oh, you take it back to yeah, the alcohol? But ideal, ideally, you're supposed to plow like maybe 50% at oh, least okay. back in. Hmm. You see, but now if, I mean right now if I was an alcoholic right now, I'd be looking at these birds, I'm saying, okay, each bird is about 40,000, yeah? Hmm. And I have like, uh, in total, plus the ones down, I have about 500 something birds. So I'm going to look at that and I'm looking at 40,000 times 500. You know what? Uh-uh, let me call a truck. <laughs> then I'm going to call a truck and then I'm going to go and take it to the, to the bar. What has been your biggest challenge? I feel like the government is not doing enough in terms of market. That's mm. one, supporting mm. farmers. Mm. Uh, if you have your maize and the price of maize is five is 200 shillings, we mm. had that crisis one time. If the maize is now 200 shillings, you're not going to get a profit. The government ideally would have had somewhere where it can buy your maize at maybe 500, 600, mm. and then they store it. You know the way it is in Tanzania with cashew nuts? Yeah. When the price for cashew nuts falls, the Tanzanian government normally comes and helps. They support the farmers. Here, if you make the losses, you make them alone, without the government. And I respect my commander-in-chief, the president, but then that is somewhere where he can improve. Uh, the other issue is uh, the commitment of workers. Mm. Some workers don't share your vision. Um, you have a worker, you have a plan, you lay out the strategy for them, but as soon as you turn the other side, this worker is doing his own things. Uh, they don't share the vision, they just target workers. They have specific things that they want from this place, and they want to steal from you, they want to do everything that you don't want. The, the, another one is the fake drugs on the market. And, fake and even, drugs? Yes, fake drugs on the market. Um, another challenge I had before it was improved was uh, you, because the, the local breed is rare these days on a large scale. So you'd take your eggs to the, uh, to the hatchery and you'd find that they have sold your eggs. You see? Because someone wants local birds. He's going to come. Now, if you look at them critically, some of them, and you don't know, you can think they are croilers. But the difference is that these ones, they sit on their eggs. Croilers don't sit on their eggs. Now, if someone knows that this gentleman has local birds and you take them for hatching, he's now going to call someone that has been looking for local birds. They'll say, no, you know what? We have local birds. And then he's going to switch. And you know when they are chicks, you cannot tell. So he's going to switch them for you and he's going to give you croilers. Then you realize it like after like yeah, a month. month. You realize because they're growing really fast compared to this. And you say, oh, this man gave me croilers. So, but that one was solved because you have to follow up with it. You don't just allow it to go. So you see, this is the manure I was telling you about. Okay. Uh, we make sure, this is from chicken, we make sure we don't throw it away because we use it. So everything on this farm is self-sustaining. Oh. If, if I've cleared out uh, layers, if I've cleared out 
Uh, the broilers up there, if I've cleaned uh, down there under the pellets with the with the, the chicken, the local chicken, I'll heap them here when the time is right, get them, spread them out on that Russian comfrey which the chicken will eat, on that matoke which we shall sell and get money. <music> Going to the beef farm without? No, it's okay. They are friendly. No, trust me. Trust no. me. No, trust me. <laughs> no, trust me. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> I, I noticed that they are friendly. So you see, they are minding their business. Everyone knows where his hive is, and our hive. So they are minding their business. So we have some um, hives that are still in the trees. What we did, we brought them. Put them in the trees, they got colonized. So the ones that get colonized, we bring them here. Colonized? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> just like Africa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just like Africa. See the see the see the small hives over there? That's what I was telling you that we get them when they are colonized. Each hive that is colonized, we go deep in the night. I wanted to understand how they're colonized. Like the bee comes. The bees find themselves. They just oh. come with their queen, they settle there with the queen. That's what they call colonizing that hive. So they will clean out the hive. If the hive is not suitable for them, they'll run away from the hive. Every box, these boxes that you see here, every colonized hive down there, will get it and add it to these boxes and pile. Two, 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 like the way you're seeing these ones. This okay. one has to be put, yes, okay. all the way to up there. So we have a total, right now we have a total of 150 hives and it may be the most profitable, according to the experts. Even if I was to get two million from each hive every year, if I have 150 hives, that would be 300. I think that would be, because you have this twice. <laughs> this guy's a millionaire, right? <laughs> this is the Garden of Eden, man. He, he got cassava so I can live here. Because I can blend the plantain and the cassava and make my fufu from here. This place looks huge. It is huge. What do you do here? So this is a paddock. We release some of the cows um, to come down here, especially in the morning, Ooh. as they are cleaning their their crow. They'll come down here and um, you know spend some time, eat some little grass here, drink some water over there, and then go back up. This is a, a store for the pigs. The pig unit is 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 here. Ooh. How many pigs do you have? Uh, right now I have 45, but the maximum I've had is 300. But because of swine fever. Uh, every time I get a bunch of six months, seven months, I sell at once. So that's the, that, that's the structure for the pigs Ooh. and the second silage pit I was telling you about. Yeah, I think because of biosecurity we cannot enter. Yeah. But um, will you encourage more youth of Africa to venture into agriculture? Yeah. Uh, the market the market is not well structured, but the market is there. I would encourage them to go because the opportunity is there. No one is going to give you the money that a, a pig farm is going to give you. Your own pig farm, your own chicken farm, your own cattle farm. No one's going to give you that money. I also encourage my workers here. I teach them. Most of them come here. They don't know how to make silage. They go through the process with me. When he goes back to the village, even if he has a very local cow, he knows that he can make silage. He knows he can use AI. And he knows that in two years' time, he has a cow that is giving him maybe 15 liters, mm. 10 liters. Mm. From that local cow, he has mm. sold it and he has bought a young one. So you don't just come here and pass through the phase, come work for me, go and stay the same. I try to treat my workers like, we're like, like human beings, like exactly. my brothers. I try exactly. to make sure that they come here. They know, and if you've noticed, they are, they are free with me. Yeah. yeah. So I try to make sure that when they come, they don't go as they came. They come when they've learned a lot, they go out when they've learned a lot. Final message to Africans watching us across the globe. Africa, we are, we are I think we are the youngest population in the world. Mm. And we are, we are much, much bigger than all the European countries in terms of space. And I think we can, we can do much more. We need to change our mindset. We need to, also the governments need to help us. Don't, don't make policies that only promote selfish interests. Make policies that are decent and help the young people. Put programs like PDM for us in Uganda here that you know will benefit everyone that is in Africa. But other than that, 
We have the potential to be the greatest continent. We have the potential to feed the world. We only have to start working now. <laughs>